All right, guys, we're home stretch. This is the last real substantive session that we're going to do together. So what we're doing today is we're going to build off of what we did the last time, which is the strut endurance athlete. And here we're going to look instead of strut endurance, which is flatline running. That's the only strut endurance event that we have. We're going to look at motor endurance, and that's basically all the other endurance sports. That's going to be your cycling, your swimming, your your cross-country skiing, your rowing, all of these other things. All right, so again, remember, motor endurance. We're using the muscle as a motor rather than as a strut. That means it's got to shorten to produce power, to overcome the inertia of the water, the road, the snow, whatever it is that we're looking to overcome. All right, and in these events, the big difference between motor and strut endurance is that muscle mass is important for performance in the endurance, in the muscle uh, motor endurance events. The best example of this is an elite rower. The best predictor for performance in the elite rowers is your body weight. The bigger your body weight, the better you're going to perform. Because you're bigger, you're stronger. In rowing, you need your whole upper body and lower body in order to propel the boat forward. So your power to weight ratio, your muscle mass, your body mass, is gonna be the best predictor of performance. What these guys are doing at six foot four, six foot six inches, 250, 260 pounds, they're training 25 hours a week in the boat, endurance. They're eating 8,000, 9,000 calories a day and they're still losing muscle mass and strength. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent their loss of muscle mass as they train those huge volumes. Um, unlike rowing, where you need all of your muscles, in cycling, you only need muscles in the legs. In swimming, you only need muscles in the back and the shoulders. So really, there it's important to have strong muscles and then be small in the rest of the place to have this thing that we call the best power to weight ratio. Power to weight ratio, overall, What's the strength of the muscles that are needed to do the activity relative to the mass of the rest of the activity? All right, so the rest of the body. So, so if you're hugely strong, but you have a big old pot, that doesn't mean you're gonna be a great cyclist because you have to carry that weight. I'll give you an example. We did um, this really cool thing where we did this power, these, this power training where you get on these stationary bikes and basically it records the power you produce and I was sitting there and this was like a Canadian Olympic team thing that I was talking at. And there I am with the, right beside me is the woman who set the one kilometer time trial record. And there's another woman who's a professional cyclist over there. We're looking up at the board and I won. But I won because they're tiny. So I could produce more power. And as long as we're on a stationary bike, hey, world champion. But as soon as we get out and we go up a hill and I got to carry my big fat ass up the hill, uh-uh, it's not happening. All right, so the difference again between motor and strut endurance is the best predictor of strut endurance performance, so flatland running, is the volume of your leg from the, from the knee down. If we take everybody around and we take a big drum of water, we measure the height of the water and everybody sticks their foot in the water up to their knee, what we're going to get is we're going to get a change in the volume of the bucket. The person who had the smallest change in the volume of the bucket has the biggest chance to be the fastest. That's because muscle is a negative correlate with muscle, with flatland running. The more mass that you have in your foot and your lower leg, the worse you are going to be as a runner. All right? Because in running, you don't need muscle. It just needs to contract isometric. It doesn't need to be strong to do that. So the goal of all of your endurance training is to maximize power to weight ratio increase mitochondrial mass in your big motor units while minimizing injury. All right, so that's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to increase mitochondrial mass in, in your type 2As and your type 2X muscle fibers. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna do that either by recruiting them by doing high intensity work or by doing long, slow endurance work that depletes all of the glycogen out of the type 1s. And slowly over time, you have to use your type 2s more and more and more because now you've gone so long that your type ones are getting depleted, now you have to use your type twos. And even though you're not running fast, you're still recruiting those type two motor units. All right, so remember your, base, your phases of training, your base phase, your specific preparation, and that's made up of your speed development and your, and, and your, um, and your coordination phase. But really when we talk about motor endurance, 
we're not talking the same degree of stiffness. You can't, you, we're not really focusing on stiffness. So the specific preparation becomes really one thing. It's both, it's you're trying to work out and you're trying to increase power velocity at lactate threshold. So you're getting both the endur both the economy and the lactate threshold and you're trying to get those things together. Whereas in running, we can separate them a little bit more because um, because we're using so much more stored energy in running than we are in cycling or skiing or, or all of these other things. All right, so that's the only real change in their phases of training. And I talk about a few things here, high metabolic stress, low mechanical stress, we've talked about that. You're five to 10% above race weight. Here, we're gonna to shift towards higher mechanical loads and speed. You're gonna be in caloric balance in competition, and that's where you're really gonna try and hit it, get everything behind it, and, and really push. To, to maximize performance.